Episode 281 Winning the Euro Millions. Hello, and welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for being here. Um, hope you're all staying safe in the current COVID um, climate. Um, I hope you're wearing your mask when you're supposed to and uh, sterilizing those hands now, you know. So, this episode is about um, well, winning the Euro Millions. So, if you're not in Europe, um, you may not have heard of the Euro Millions. So basically it's a lottery, um, like any other lottery I suppose, but it's across several countries in Europe. I think initially it was just somewhere like, you know, the UK and, I don't know, France and Germany or something like that. And uh, I think it expanded quite rapidly to include Spain, Portugal, Luxembourg and Ireland uh, as well, you know, the island of Ireland. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lottery. You, you, you know, you, you pick some numbers. They come up, you win. If they don't come up, you lose, you know. Um, I'm not a big fan of lotteries. Um, I, I know it's gambling. Um, let's get out the way straight away. Um, <laughs> it's gambling, and gambling's bad. It's one of those most destructive vices, I think. Um, it can easily get out of hand. Um, and, you know, you don't get a hangover. You don't feel ill with it and it can destroy your life and uh, I know many stories about people where it's took over their lives and they've lost everything, they've lost a partner, they've lost a family they've lost a house, they've lost a job, oh man, it's so destructive so um, yeah, uh, when the fun stops stop, I think is the phrase that seems to be banded around but um, be under no illusion though that these uh, betting companies and uh, the lottery included they're trying to entice some of the most vulnerable and poorest people in society with the promise of riches. Um, and, I mean, you might hear it, well, you've heard it here first, but I'm going to tell you this now, you're not going to win the lottery. <laughs> well, certainly not the big prize. So, um, so let's get back to Euro Millions anyway. So, you know, in Ireland we have a local lottery that's been around actually a long time. It predates the UK lottery. And it was a way that the government could get funding for various things, you know. So, don't get me wrong, you know, about 50% of it, I think, goes to good causes, which, you know, that's always good, isn't it? But a lot goes to, you know, hangers-on people, the company, the, you know, the government tax and stuff like that. So, it's not all good, you know. Um, I did an interview with the um, the people behind the National Lottery there a few years ago. I didn't get the role, and I'm sort of glad I didn't. Once I learned about their infrastructure and things like that, you start going, oh man, do you really want to be that close to the, uh, <laughs> that close to the numbers? <laughs> so I was sort of glad I didn't get the uh, the position. But talking to somebody who was um, part of the infrastructure behind it, uh, certainly in Ireland, it's sort of depressing now, the whole affair and how they're enticing people. Now I know they're regulated and there's laws and everything else. Yeah, I get all that, I understand that, but... It ultimately is a tax on the poor, and it's, uh, ah, in some ways, very sad. However, let's pick out some positivity. Uh, <laughs> so, I think it was about 2004 uh, when Euro Minions first came out, and basically it was like a co-production between a few of the lottery um, charity companies in different countries around Europe. And what was amazing about it was the numbers involved. Now, if you're listening to this from America, Oh, you're probably used to big numbers, big number wins, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know. But in 2004, it was a very new thing. Uh, I think most lotteries in different countries, they were relatively small. Don't get me wrong now, it's still a lot of money. I mean, the Irish one, you might get five, six million if on a rollover, you know. But it wasn't like a hundred million, you know. So anyhow, um, the Euro Millions um, gave people in Europe, well, the opportunity really in some ways to win that much. Yeah, one person out of like hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. Yeah, the stats are awful if you look at them too closely. But anyhow, it came out in 2004 and uh, quite a lot of excitement around it, really. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's one of those things. You know, I, I do it occasionally. I don't do it very often. Um, I know people that have done the lottery, done the Euro Millions for years, and they're religious. They literally do it every week. And they've never won anything substantial you know <laughs> which is awful sad it's awful so i did i did have some wins on the euro millions which is uh well basically the subject of this uh, episode of this podcast so uh basically going back to around 2004 2005 
there was a lot of media around the Euro Millions, and I remember hearing about it. And I, I think I did a few quick picks, did a couple of lines, didn't win anything, you know. Um, and at that time, I was working for Hewlett Packard, and uh, I worked with a guy, and uh, he says to me, uh, "Listen, Jason, what do you think that um, say ten of us in the company, me, you, and eight other guys, we all put a hundred euros worth of quick picks in, you know, and uh, see if we can win, you know, something on the Euro Millions." And uh, one thing I did like was, well, we won't do it till it's 100 million. It has to be a 100 million prize before we do it, you know. And that didn't come around very often. It still doesn't, actually. But, you know, the roll of when it comes up and it's a big prize. And that's pretty much how I do the Euro Millions in, in general is I wait till it's a big prize. So I said, well, how are we going to work this? Because we didn't want a lot of work administrating, administrating a, a lottery and, you know... Like, you know, a lot of people do it where, and I think it was the electricity bar DSB, they had like, you know, a thousand people or something at one point doing it. And somebody had to collect the money, keep a record, and all the rest of it. And the worst thing was, if someone missed a week, then, then you won. They said, oh, I, I was going to pay the week. I still want, they still want the winning prize. Even, you know, it's awful. So we said, well, listen, let's not have any of that. So all you do is, you come in with the quick picks, you buy them yourself, you get a hundred euros worth, whatever that is, you know. You come in with the quick picks. You can take a copy if you want for home, but you have to bring the quick picks in. We put them all together. We put them in a the safe. Um, <laughs> working in tech, we had a safe. Now, it wasn't overly secure. It was a fire safe. It wasn't designed for security. But we said, listen, we'll put them all in the safe, lock them up, boom, come back on the Monday. If we've won, whatever, you know, we'll sort the, we'll distribute the prizes. So, so we did this. It was the first time we did this. So, um, it's quite an experience because in those days you couldn't do it online. So you had to go into the shop to do it. So I went into the shop and can I have a hundred euros worth of quick picks? You know? <laughs> and they did them and they printed them all out in the years we gave them the money. Thank you very much. Because obviously the shop makes a little bit of a, a cut, you know, when you when you buy these things. And they're quite happy, you know. So I had my quick picks and uh, I don't, I must, I maybe I photocopied them, I can't remember. I certainly I think I took a note of the numbers. And basically, we got me, this other guy, so two of us had, did it, and then another eight, eight of us. We found eight gullible people. Uh, it's interesting that one person was actually two. Sounds a bit confusing. But one of the network guys said he couldn't come up with 50 euro. So he got in with another guy. So out of the 10 of us, there was actually 11 of us <laughs> in total. But it was diluted. You know, it was half to one of them. So anyhow, we, uh, we put the numbers in the safe. Um, I'd um, put them all in a spreadsheet, the numbers, actually. And then we all uh, we all went home for the weekend. So the draw at that time there was only one draw a week, and it was a Friday. And I think it's um, I think it's nine p.m. or nine thirty p.m. in France. And they're an hour ahead of of the UK and Ireland. So um, I got the results anyway on the Friday. Put them into my little spreadsheet there now, and I realised that um, well, we had to have won something. So basically, the structure of the numbers on the Euro Millions, and it's similar now. It's changed a little bit, but basically you've got five numbers and two bonus balls, okay? Now at the time, I think the five numbers were like one to 50, and the bonus was one to 10. So, you know, you had like, you know, two bonus balls and you had these five numbers. So I, I had it in my spreadsheet and I, and I checked the numbers and uh, I think I nearly fell off the sofa, like, you know, but uh, basically what we got was, we got four out of the five numbers and we got the two bonus balls. So we was one number away from the full Monty and for that particular draw, it was over 100 million euros. So we didn't win 100 million euros. So when I say we won the Euro Millions, we didn't win 100 million euros. But we had the four and the two. Now, looking back 10, I don't know, 10, 12 years later, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was 2008, 2007, I can't remember. It doesn't matter now. But looking back, I should have gone and got the tickets, I think. <laughs> you know, go, pick them up. You know what? Because I didn't know how much we'd won. We didn't know exactly. Um... So from past experience, um, it sounds better than it is. So four out of the five numbers and the two bonus balls traditionally had won between 5,000 euro and 50,000 euro, just depending how many winners there were at that level, you know? Um, I know it sounds ridiculous. You'd think we was one number away from like 100 million. But the problem with the five numbers is that at the time, I think they were one to 50 or something. So statistically, yeah. It doesn't sound as good as it, you really think it is. So we had four out of five numbers and the two bonus balls. So anyway, um, I can't remember what I did. 
Um, maybe I didn't message the other guys over the weekend. But on a Monday, anyway, I went into work and uh, we discussed it, like, you know. And we found the winning ticket out of all these, all these, uh, you know, um, quick picks that we had. Um, we never told the person, uh, this is this is actually, uh, <laughs> he's not listening now, but uh, we never told the person whose ticket it was. And uh, we, um, it was quite interesting because, and uh, Jemba said that one of the one of the guys couldn't get the hundred euro off for the, which is fair enough. He couldn't get hundred euro for euro, the euro the tickets, quick picks. So he got with another guy, the two hundred and fifty in. It was one of those guys. Anyway, <laughs> his one ticket had won five thousand euro. Now we didn't know how much it was. We didn't know until we went to the whatever. But it turned out because there was a lot of winners, it wasn't like you know fifty thousand. It was five thousand. But do you know what? Amongst the ten of us. We put a hundred euro in, and we got five hundred euro out each. So that wasn't bad at all, you know. So that lunchtime, um, well, for various reasons, the guy who suggested the whole thing decided he go alone to the to the post office to pick up the uh, the winnings. Which, yeah, okay. And when he came back, we decided how we're going to give everybody the money. So there was, me and him, it was quite easy to give each other the money. So we still had the remaining sort of four grand to give out to people. So we went to the canteen and they used to have these like little doggy bags, you know, for people doing a takeaway, lunch, whatever. So we got eight of those and we put 500 euro in each one of these, you know. Uh, and we essentially went round the company and it was quite a big site, Hewlett Packard in Leak Slip. Um, it's, it's pretty much gone now. But at the time there was like, I don't know, three or 4,000 people on the site. But we went around and no, they hadn't realised, maybe we hadn't told them they'd won, I can't remember now, but... We went up to them with this bag of cash. And you know what? It was the most amazing feeling in the world, I have to say. Without a doubt. I mean, listen, I enjoyed the 500 euro. Don't get me wrong that I'd won. But giving people 500 euro that they didn't expect, wow, that is off the charts how good that feels. And to see someone's face, like, it was just... It was quite a buzz now, you know, and, and thinking back, it was a bigger buzz than me winning the 500 euro, my little share, giving it to people, and they didn't realise that we'd won, you know. Um, and like I said, we didn't tell who whose ticket it was. I think that was very unfair, you know. Uh, it'd be unfair on the person who'd, who'd done the ticket, because it's completely random, as we know. But, um, so we, we really made, <laughs> well, I was happy. The other guy was happy. Eight people, were, well, nine people, were really happy, you know. And I'll never forget that buzz of giving people cash like that they'd won, you know. So um, I'd like to say, from my perspective, there was a real happy ending to all this. That You know, I took that 500 euro and I bought Bitcoin. And now I'm a millionaire. No, that didn't happen. So I I did, re I sort of, I don't want to use the word reinvest. I sort of put it back into the lottery and didn't win again. But um, it was a, it was good. It was interesting. Anyway, you know, I did enjoy it. And I, I'll never forget that buzz of, you know, giving someone a bit of cash. It was amazing. So a few years later, um, so my rule, and I've said this about the other minutes, is, is if it's a big prize, I'm in the mood. Maybe have the money as well. I'll, I'll do, a, you know, I'll do a few lines, a few quick picks. I never use my own numbers. Um, I mean, I, I've wrote some software I've analysed the lottery, I analysed the Euro Millions. I asked him, did a bit of code whereby I listed every single permutation of the lottery numbers for Euro Millions. And like, what does it mean? You know, it's like, what are you going to do? You can't do all the numbers, you know? So um, I've analysed a lot of it. And, you know, there's all sorts of talk about number wheels. And you can, in some ways, improve your chances. But statistically, the, the improving your chances is so minor. You know, it's still pretty shit, to be honest. But anyway, sort of wind forward. I think it was 2011, and uh, the Euro Millions had rolled over again. It was over 100 million, whatever. It was a big number, you know. So I did it. Now, what Ireland had introduced, and I think it was around 2007, was like a, a, an Irish thing whereby for an extra, I think, 50 cent per row. I think it was 50 cent. Um you could be asked to use the same numbers, but for an Irish draw. Now, there's more prizes, but there's not many of them. So there was like, I don't know, half a million euro, there was 5,000 euro, there was like 250 euro. There was only like two or three prizes. But basically, if you got so many numbers on this Irish draw, which is using the same numbers that you put into the Euro Millions, you know? 
So anyhow, it was around 2011, and uh, I'd, I'd done the Euro Millions. I'd done this plus as well. They called it Euro Millions Plus, and it was uniquely Irish. There was no other country I don't think was doing it at the time. And uh, I checked the main numbers, to be honest, against you know the, the numbers that came in on the draw, and I hadn't won. Um, but I remember I didn't I didn't throw the ticket away. I kept the ticket, you know. I still had it. This wasn't online, by the way. This is obviously a physical ticket, and I kept it, you know, in my wallet, I think, and. Uh, I'd say it was a good two weeks later, maybe three weeks. Um, I noticed it in my wallet, just accidentally the ticket. Oh, Jesus, there's that ticket, you know. I thought, well, I really need to check this properly, don't I? I'm going to throw it in the bin. But I always had this thing about the, the lottery ticket that um, I'm not going to throw it away. I want to check it. I want to make sure before I put it in the bin. You know, tw tw check it twice. Check it three times, you know. I just never wanted that, you know, to be thrown in the bin, you know. So I got it out, and, uh, oh, yeah, you know, the main prize hadn't won it, you know. Well, you'd have heard on the news, wouldn't you? Somebody going, oh, someone in Ireland's won 100 million. Yeah, you'd have heard, wouldn't you? But then when I checked the um, Euro, the plus uh, prize, I noticed that it looks like I won five grand, you know. <laughs> 5,000 euro. Um, yeah, and I had, and it was a shock. Um, and I wasn't in Ireland, I was in Spain at the time, and I checked, and I went, ah, okay. You know, so uh, I had won 5,000 for myself uh, on the Euro Millions, which was uh, in, in, incredible. I mean, when I was doing the stuff with the guys in the office, and we actually got out of hand a little bit. Remember I said we were doing 10 people, 100 euro each. It became 10 euro and ended up with 100 people doing it. And it just got unwieldy. It was awful. It was a disaster. And ultimately, we, you know, I stopped doing it. Um, this was awful responsibility. The other thing as well is I couldn't do it for myself, the lottery. It sounds ridiculous, but when you're in a syndicate and you're in, like, in charge of the syndicate, it's like, okay, I can't do it for myself. Because if I was to win it, they would say I was cheating. That was it, you know, I'd be finished. So I'd stopped doing it in, in the company anyway. And, uh, yeah, so a few years later, and I, and I won the, uh, the, the 5,000 euro. And it was, it was brilliant. It was a lovely feeling, you know, and uh, quite a surprise as well. Um, so I don't consider myself to be very lucky. Um, at the time, the money was really, really needed. Um, I, I don't know. I'm planning a, a Disneyland, um, a Disney World, sorry, in, in Florida trip, and I know the money was looking a bit tight before going. And then to have this windfall just made it perfect. You know, it was just came at the right time. And I don't consider, like I said, I don't consider myself to be a lucky person. I don't do the lottery very often. Um, I've had lots of little tiny wins, you know three euro scratch card six euro here whatever you know they don't really make a difference but i don't do it every week and that's that's the key for me is i'm not going to do this every week just do it every so often you know but i have to say the two things that i, I take away from uh, winning the euro millions uh, small prizes is the first thing was giving people money it really was the most amazing feeling i have to say the response and just how happy they were i mean wow what a buzz! That was fantastic, and of course, the you know the second time that I won it for myself was just it was incredible because the timing was perfect. You know, I always say whenever you need money, you can never get it. You know, and when you've loads of money, you just seem to have no problem getting money. You know, uh, but that was one occasion when I, I really could have done with the money, and just like magic, it appeared. So yeah, incredible stuff. <laughs>